everyone, this is Carolise, and today we're going to be talking about a very important business analyst soft skill. That is the presentation skill. Very, very important. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. I have my Game of Thrones banners up, House Stark and House Targaryen. I am a big Game of Thrones fan. Like, I absolutely love the show. And, you know, I don't even have cable at home, but when it's Game of Thrones time, I got to get my HBO. Like, I have got to get my HBO for Game of Thrones. So, it's pretty awesome for me. And if you, if you follow Game of Thrones, you know what this is. <laughs> I got my own little brochure for House Targaryen, and I'm gonna put it on right now. Mm-hmm, big, big Game of Thrones fan. And I actually got some phone cases that will celebrate Game of Thrones season eight. Those are my dragons, and these are my characters. So I am super psyched. Can't wait for the season to start. It's the last season, but I wanna see how it all comes together. So just a sidebar there. Okay, back to the topic of our video. So today we're talking about the presentation skills. And I'm doing a series on business analyst soft skills because so often we talk about the things that you have to know, the hard skills, the things that will make you into a real, really good business analyst. But we forget that it's really the soft skills that help to make you hone your career. Like you have to have um, all of the soft skills to help you be very good at the, I guess, the hard skills, right? So it's all, it all comes together and we can't leave off any part of it. So in this series, I'm gonna be talking about presentation skills, uh, documentation skills, communication skills, and organization skills. Those are the four things I think will help us a long way as business analysts. And there are some tips and tricks that I've been using and I'll show you the things that work and I'll also tell you the things that don't work and some of the experiences I've had that I've learned from and hopefully you can learn from as well. Okay, so presentation skills, right? We're talking about conducting a presentation, being the presenter and having the ability to convey an idea or a thought, a suggestion, you know, coming up with some new process or new concepts and explaining that via a presentation and what are the skills that you will need to be able to do that very well. One is the presentation itself. What are the things you should do when it comes to making a good presentation? And also I'll break it into the presenter. What are the things that you as a presenter should be doing in order to make sure your presentation accomplishes its purpose? So that said, let's start into the types of presentation that you have. So presentations can be in one of four categories, right? So it could be informative, where you just wanna tell someone something. It could be demonstrative, which is probably where we lie most of the time as business analysts, because we wanna show something. We wanna present something that someone can see how a process is gonna work or a system new flow is gonna work, or you know, just we're trying to demonstrate something. You can also have presentations that are persuasive, so most of the time, if you're doing an interview, you want to convince them to hire you, right? You're going to have a persuasive interview um, presentation. So that's persuasive. And then you might just have like an inspirational. So you see people go up on stage and they're just giving a speech. They're having a presentation, but it's more inspirational, you know, just to motivate someone to do something. So those are the four. But as business analysts, most of the time when we're doing presentation, we're gonna be in the informative or demonstrative capacity most of the time. Now, if you're gonna be doing presentation, one of the first things you have to do is you have to know your audience, right? So as business analysts, we tend to present to either the business or the development team. So if you're presenting to the business team, then your approach will be different than if you're presenting to the development team. The most important thing is to know your audience. 
So if you're presenting to the business side, you could be presenting to the, um, the C-level executives, you could be presenting to some managers, you could be presenting to the actual staff members, you could be presenting to clients. So you have to tailor your presentation to the crowd that's gonna be consuming what you're presenting. So if you're presenting to the C-level executives, one of the things I would say is you have to be very conscious of how you present the data. C-level execs, you're in that presentation because you want to get a decision out of them. You don't present the C-level just because you want to inform them necessarily. Most of the time you want to inform, but you also want a decision. You want them to decide something. You want them to give you direction as to where you need to go. So make that very clear. So the first thing I would do for both any kind of presentation is to have your objectives up front. Have your objectives up front and say, this is what we're trying to do with the rest of this presentation. So as you're going through the presentation, they have that in mind that they'll have to decide and everything you're gonna be showing them in the presentation will be incrementally helping them to come to a conclusion or, or helping them to understand enough to make a decision. When you're presenting to C-level executives, you have to come to the point very quickly and you have to let them know from the beginning what is it that you want from them out of this presentation? What decisions are you gonna be asking them upfront? And then at the end, you can put the, you know, you can get back to that and ask them again, but you wanna let them know before you even start the presentation, what is the objectives? What are you here to do? What is the topic you're gonna to be covering? Because the worst thing is to sit in a presentation and then you're wondering what's the point? Like, why am I being told all this stuff? So you have to make that very clear especially with C-level execs because they don't really have a lot of time. And if you have an hour with them, you got to make it in that hour. So if you're presenting to um, managers, most of the time the managers might be very familiar with the topic. They might know already what it is that you're going to be talking about. And they know the ins and outs of the system and the business and whatever it is that you're feel that you're in. So you, you got to prep them for what they're going to be asked at the end of it, because you don't want them to be like, okay, that was good. But then what do you want from me? Like, what, 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 why, why am I sitting here? Presenting to like managers, it's kind of the same thing. You want a decision from them. So you're going to ask them up front. Hey, in this presentation, we're going to be talking about these three things. And at the end of it, I would like a decision on option A, B or C. That's what you say at the beginning. Um, if you're presenting to staff, regular staff members, they would know the most about the process of the system. So you don't really have to go into much detail about each, each thing because your audience is very familiar with how the whole operation goes. So you just need to give it, give the new things to them or give the, you know, the caveats and all the intricate, de the intricate um, things that they would need to know to do their job every day, but you don't have to explain the entire process because they do it every day and they know it. Um, if you're presenting to clients or potential clients, then this is where you have to be even more articulate and, and meticulous in how you convey because they may not be familiar with your system, with your process, with what you're doing. So you kind of have to introduce more and take it, don't take it for granted that they know already. You have to explain a lot more. So that's the different groups on the business side. On the technical side, you have your dev, you have your QA, you have um, maybe subject matter experts on and developers can be front end or back end or, you know, server side, it doesn't matter. They're all technical people. And so when you're talking to them, like you have to kind of show them the value of what they're doing without getting into all of the business cases. So you're gonna say, we need to build this because we're solving for X, Y, Z problem. And then you can say, it's going to, you know, you have to use more technical terms with them. With the development team, you have to be a little bit more detailed because these are very detail oriented people. They wanna get down into the weeds. And so you have to be ready to explain all the anomalies, all the, you know, the, the, the the happy path as well as the things that can go awry you have to explain all of that in minute detail because they're very detail oriented and so they have to know exactly what you expect for them to write the code etc so you kind of have to go into a little bit more technical um, nuances with the technical team so those are the two groups of people in terms of audience that you should prepare a presentation for 
need to do when you're doing a presentation as a business analyst is you have to decide if you want to use slides or not because you can do a presentation that doesn't have slides you could just be bringing up the system and showing people things and so on you don't really have to use slides all the time but if you are going to use slides you have to use them very very carefully and they have to help and not hurt what you're trying to accomplish so the first thing i would say about slides is you need to be able to organize your slides so that you incrementally get to the point that you're trying to get to don't flood everything on the first slide and then it's just too much and too crowded. Be very careful and strategic about what information you put first, second, third, fourth, etc. And make your slides, you know, short. Like don't have too much text on the slide because it's hard to read. People can't follow you. And if you can, use graphics more often than not. So instead of showing people a long table full of data, Use a chart, you know, use a graph or something to kind of summarize the information so it's easier to consume. People can't really relate very well to lots of text on a big slide or lots of text, you know, data in a table. They can't. You have to make it easy for them by summarizing it and making sure it is telling the story you want it to tell in a visual way, you know, with pictures, with graphs, with, you know, with visualizations. Of different kinds and also in terms of slides organization if you have several different concepts in the same presentation you break those up with different types of slides for each section then you want to organize your slides so that they're telling the story and you're putting small chunks of information in each slide that gradually get to the point that you're trying to get to but of course you're not going to make your slide too long and belabor too long on different points you just want to make sure that you're not cramming too much into one slide and making it hard to read and hard to follow use appropriate slide colors slide colors slide design don't let it be too busy and too much colors that you know conflict conflict with each other and just doesn't look good like you wouldn't have a slide with all these designs like i have on my shirt right here <laughs> going back to my roots the african roots right but the point is just make your slides the simpler the better like when i'm presenting to um, internal staff we have a template that i use at my job and we just use that template and sometimes i don't even use any slide design it's just a blank white slide and i put my stuff on there and i explain because it's internal and i'm not trying to impress them with how much colors i can put on my slide so be very you know simplicity is best simple to the point effective efficient you don't need to put all these colors and distract everyone with all, I'll give you a quick story. So I had a presentation with the, the VP one time. The VP, you know, not C-level executive, but, you know, higher level management. And I had this slide and I thought it was so beautiful. Like I had colors and it was like, you know, fancy animations and all kinds of stuff going on in my slide. And when I was presenting, I did a, I think I did a good job explaining what I was explaining. But I could see that people were just looking at the slide and just like trying to figure out where they should be focusing their eyes. And it was, I could see that it was distracting, right? I was distracting them in my own presentation because I used a very fancy slide that didn't really add value to what I was saying. So don't do that. Like just simplicity is best. Simple to the point, effective. That's, what, that's the way to go. Many times as business analysts, we have to go between different systems or between different files. And so you might have your PowerPoint presentation and then you stick a link in there to go to Excel and then you have to go open up a software over here. So you're, you're everywhere. And it, it's good because you want to present the different um, options in, the, in their native way. Like you want to go to Excel if it's a table or you want to go to the system if it's a system functionality. But at the same time, jumping around everywhere can, can distract people. And it takes a lot of coordination to make sure that the file opens to the right page and the system login is working over here so that you don't waste time trying to just get in, trying to find the file and all that stuff. So you have to be very meticulous and careful when you have to deal with multiple files and multiple systems, multiple environments. Um, if it's possible, I would suggest you take a screenshot so everything is inside the PowerPoint as opposed to having to jump out and jump back in to go to different places. If that can work, if that serves the purpose that you're trying to, you know, to do. If you're trying to show the system working, obviously the screenshot might not be the best because you want to show them 
real time how it's how it's working but for other cases where it's possible if you can keep in one system in one software that would be absolutely wonderful the other thing i want to caution you against as well is technology right so sometimes you have a presentation it could be them to clients it could be to you know really um heavy hitters and powerful people cios ceos so on and so forth and the technology can fail you i have a video about how to conduct a good meeting an effective meeting and that's one of the points i pointed out in that video and I'll put the link somewhere below or somewhere. But what it is is that you might get in there and you can't log on to the Wi-Fi for some reason, the password not working or your system just slow, it's not connecting to the projector well, or if you're connecting to a TV, the TV is just not coming on and all kinds of stuff can happen when you're having your presentation, especially, especially if it's a very important person that you're, you're you're presenting to so one of my caution is to try to prep before so if you can go in the room or in the you know the meeting conference room or whatever if you can be in there a little bit earlier and connect make sure everything's working make sure all the logins are working and make sure that everything is good right to try and prevent the technical issues that i've seen happen to so many people all the time when they're giving a presentation because what it does it makes you get on edge and then everybody's waiting on you and you can't even start because you can't get into the system then you get a little flustered time is being wasted and it just it goes awry so if you can get in there earlier power to you another thing i would caution about when you're doing a presentation is to not use animations too much like i feel like the animations are great if you're giving like an inspirational presentation or you want to you know persuade someone if it's a persuasive presentation but for the office i mean in you know you're you're demonstrating something i don't think you need to have a lot of animations as a matter of fact when i am doing presentations i only use like appear and disappear or maybe a little blink of an arrow somewhere or something but all this fancy spinning and all this stuff you don't need it you really don't need it so don't complicate your presentation with too much animations and too much fancy stuff going on because you want to be able to flip through quickly and if you have to go back you want to flip back quickly without having to deal with the animations in the way as well now you as a presenter you are the business analyst one thing i would say as a presenter in your presentation you have to be dominating the content. You have to know what you're talking about and you have to come across to know what you're talking about, right? You don't want to be the presenter and you're unsure and you're iffy and you're wondering and it, it's like, if you don't have confidence in what you're saying, nobody else will. So you have got to be like dominating that, like you are the boss in there. When you're presenting, it's your time to shine. You got to be in control and this is your thing. That doesn't mean that you don't ask questions in your presentation. So don't feel like you can't ask a question, but I mean, you have to have the confidence that when you step in there and you're presenting, everybody knows that you are the authority on this topic and you're running the presentation. So be assertive, be sure of yourself, make sure you dominate the, the content. And if somebody asks you something, you can always say you don't know, but you know some other thing and you can point to what you do know, refer to somebody else for what you don't know. But the point is you need to be, you, you are the leader in the presentation. You are the one bringing everybody together. You are the one in control of the presentation and you have to make that known by the way you're acting, by the way you're talking, by the assertiveness that you will have when you are conducting your presentation. That's right. So that's the tips I have for you as a business analyst to go out there and do your presentation. When you're presenting, it's a very important soft skill because as a business analyst, you're going to be asked to present to different groups at some point, and you have to be ready to do that. If you're a person that's nervous, you don't like to be in this limelight, don't like to be the center of attention, you're going to have to get over it because you have to make presentations to different teams and you have to get used to it if you're going to be a business analyst. All right. So thank you guys for watching. This was great. I hope I gave you some tips that you could use and check out my other videos in the series of soft skills where I talk about communication, documentation, um, organization, and of course, this one was about presentation. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.